Uh, the first time I heard about historical practice, I was in fifth class in St. Mark's Primary School. There had been a fight in the class and everyone in the class didn't really know what historical practice was. So the teacher just explained that it was a better way to solve things without being aggressive. Um, so they asked questions such as what happened, uh, what were you thinking at the time? And there was a better atmosphere in the class and that was my first experience of RFE. Restorative practice has greatly helped our classroom work as a team because at this earlier last year, there was a lot of tension in the class. There were problems and people just weren't happy with how the relationship was between the students and between students and teacher. So we had a circle for a good long while and we just talked things through. We talked about our problems, what we could improve on and how to make the class a dynamic again. At the end of it, we felt so relieved and we felt like our class again and we felt whole again and it just was a really good thing to help us for the rest of the year and to focus on our studies. I think the most important thing about restorative practice for me is to create a comfortable and safe environment between not just the students but the students and teachers as well because we have to all see each other every day in class and we don't want a negative energy between anyone and I think this way it's just a better way to create positivity between everyone. RP helped me a lot outside school and many different situations. For example, my sisters in school every morning do a circle and they, help, they learn everything about restorative practice. For example, if in a situation came up in my house, I would use restorative practice to find out how we could solve it and make the situation better of not doing it the next time. So it really helped me outside school. Restorative practice is when we use respect and fairness to deal with a situation as an alternative to using aggression or placing the blame on just one person. For example, if there's a conversation happening in the class where the teacher is trying to teach but two students are talking, instead of just pulling the two students out of class and giving out to them, it's what, what you're talking about, what happened, do you think that's fair, do you think that is a fair one, your other the other students in the class want to learn, and you just talk things through. And not only is it better because you don't feel like oppressed by the teacher, it also helps because you feel more resolved. Like you think about your actions more. You think about how your actions affect other people instead of just being told, oh, I can't talk in class. You think about what that has an impact on, on the teacher and your fellow classmates. Yeah, I think RP works because if a teacher took it outside the classroom, she'd be like shouting at you aggressively and if you used a restorative practice the teacher is being more kind so it just brings a good atmosphere around the class. No I don't think um, RP is only used to repair harm because you could also use it to build relationships in classrooms and in schools like for example if everybody in the class sat around in a circle and went around and said how they felt that day like on a scale of one to ten and then they would be asked, why do they feel like that? And I think they would just feel closer to their students, their classmates, and then it would help build their relationships and make them feel more comfortable in their school. So uh, a large part of restorative practice being used in our school are circles. So when you're in a classroom with your teacher, your teacher might turn around and ask the class to move the tables out of the way and come into a circle and the teacher will then sit up in the circle with everybody else with their talking piece and you're only allowed to talk when you have the talking piece which creates sort of a listening environment in your circle and everybody feels like they have a voice whereas sometimes in class some people might not feel like that. So sometimes the teacher just goes around the class asking people how they are, how they feel on a scale of 1 to 10 did they have a good weekend? And then if the teacher feels like there is a problem in the class or if there is tension, they may ask, what do you feel is the problem in the class? And how do you feel on a scale of one to 10? The start of practice needs to be more um, known to schools because it's really important with relationships with the students and the teachers. The teachers benefit from it because they gain a better relationship with the student and I always come back to them. The students will come back to them for uh, advice when it comes to exams and uh, they just feel more comfortable with the teachers to express themselves. Last year we did a restorative practice in transition year and it only got introduced to us then. This year it's become a more of a popular thing and it just needs to be introduced to more people because how important it is. Um, the benefits for a teacher would be 
they gain stronger relationships with students and that they're always feel the students feel more comfortable in class with the teacher to be more expressive. Restorative practice helped me um, break down the barriers between the student and the teacher. My own example of a teacher who I had for a few years and we always, we didn't really get along because we didn't understand each other. Um, they always kind of, they didn't understand why I acted the way as I did in class. But um, one day they pulled me aside and they used the restorative questions. They were asking, you know, why I acted the way I did in class and why the atmosphere between us was the way it was. And after we had that conversation, um, our relationship after that was much better and I felt more comfortable in the classroom with that teacher. So I think it's very important in that aspect to make you feel more comfortable in the classroom and for teachers to feel more comfortable with students as well. I was involved in uh, Young Social Innovators and we went to an open day in the RDS which involved other schools coming and showing their restorative practices and different projects. And the whole day basically went that we would do a drama and show other schools how to do restorative practice and that spread to other schools and it helps to show why restorative practice is important because it shows the teachers can get a better relationship with the students and then the students will have a better relationship and they won't feel as bad when it comes to them getting in trouble because they know it's going to be sorted out with restorative practice. I think another way to spread restorative practice is doing workshops in the schools. Um, I done a workshop last year in TY and it really helped me. I think to spread um, restorative practice more is to introduce it to the first years when they first come into the school so that if there is a problem in the class and the teacher announces that they're going to use restorative practice that it's not alien to them, that they don't know what it is and that they'd be more comfortable using it um, in their everyday life. I believe that emotional literacy is very powerful if it was to be used with first years because they'd be more comfortable to talk about their feelings and be able to go to a teacher or sit in a circle and to be able to say, I am hurt, I am sad, and it would be better so they're not bottling up their emotions.